I'll start with you. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is actually Janet Dudley um, from DTB. I handle uh, partnerships, ecosystems, and strategic um, alliances, and the fintech strategy. Um, so interestingly, uh, when you talk about digital transformation, we are right in the middle of it as DTB, hence my presence here. Uh, and uh, the way we look at digital in, uh, transformation is actually looking at your processes, your organizational culture, your organization, and marrying it to the digital sort of like roadmap um, and marrying it to the trends that are happening in the, in, in, in the world globally today and being in line to be able to actualize your strategic goals with a digital mindset. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Hello. Is that working? Hello. Hi, I'm Melissa. I'm the Vice President of Advisory and Transformation um, at Pathway. So you heard uh, Joel uh, earlier. Uh, but I'm tasked with uh, doing advisory, consultancy, etc., with a, a more, more focus on business strategy, growth strategy, etc. Um, for the last uh, five years prior, I've been in the fintech space, so digitalization, it's very similar to Janet. It's a whole holistic picture. It's not just one segment of the business, but it's actually looking at the whole entire ecosystem of the business to drive uh, things forward. So it's not, I think, the dual uh, category that you had before, the dual uh, transformation, they go hand in hand. So ensuring that not only what your customers see, from you, but it's also what you're doing through uh, your back office processes as well. So aligning the two to uh, to drive it to drive your growth forward. Uh, my name is Robert Karioki. Somebody spelled my name there. It is Karioki <laughs> with an O. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think if there is one terminology that has been uh, defined a lot today is digital transformation. And I just want to borrow what I think is a, an holistic definition. It is everything that is geared towards making it easy, make the processes more accurate. That is from technology to people. You know, it is a strategy, like if I borrow what Harry said, it's a strategy to ensure how you work, the people who work for you, give you value. Thank you. Oh. I represent Mombasa Port Sacco as the CIO, uh, where we are actually doing a lot of digital transformation that I'll be able to share as we go along. Thanks. Uh, good afternoon. Um, my name is Henry. I lead the IT team at uh, Kimisi Pesako. So, uh, digital transformation for me, I'll, I'll probably call it um, how you integrate digital technology into business, your areas of business, and how you deliver value to your customers. But again, uh, it's a continuous process that you need to uh, undergo. It's not an event, it's a process. So, as, uh, at the end of the day, you want to deliver value and in an easier, uh, cost-effective way. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon once again. Joseph Mathenge is my name. Um, digital transformation to me is scary. It means I have more areas that I need to secure. <laughs> uh, but um, in reality, I think it forces uh, security practitioners uh, to get more creative. Uh, to use an example I read once before, um, the the beauty of the bullet train was not the speed which it moves at, but was the braking system that allows that entire locomotive to stop. So my work within the digital transformation is to allow this huge transformation occurring to do it in a secure fashion. Okay, for me digital transformation means content <laughs> and conversations that need to be had. So um, I'd like to start with you gentlemen, because I know that you've done this more than once. When you have to approach the C-suite and you need to tell them that we need to do digital transformation as an organization, how do you convince them? 
how do you have this high level conversation with a CEO who is not a techie and make them understand that digital transformation is necessary? Yeah. Uh, so I have three separate conversations with the C-suite. Um, if I am talking to the CIOs, the, the ones that I'm working with, they are concerned about risk management. Mm -hmm. So my context has to be in risk management. How will the digital transformation and the security requirements continue to maintain and manage the risk around it? If it's to the CFO, he's worried about um, being efficient with money usage. Uh, so I'll talk about efficiency. Uh, that's the conversation and context. If it's the CEO, he's looking to grow the business. He is looking um, uh, for a sustainable business model being created. The conversation has to fit within that context. So depending on who I'm having the conversation with, I will um, schedule and have the conversation in that context. Okay. Uh, for me, uh, maybe it's just to make it easy. Um, sometimes technology has a lot of jargon. But just try to make it easy, make them understand what you're trying to achieve. Uh, but um, how our organizations work, they do not want to spend so much, but then they still want it to deliver. So uh, for you to deliver then, it means we have to invest in this technology. So uh, also show them how you're going to probably save cost um, from the member side as a client. Um, we call them members in the circle sector. Mm -hmm. So how you're going to make um, probably more value or give value to these uh, members how you going to grow business by getting more members. That is how we will grow business. And uh, of course, making it easy for the member to get service. So if you have iterated this to the c suit, then it will make a lot of sense and probably you'll be able to move. Okay. Yeah, uh, you know, when you come after a few speakers, they speak your, <laughs> your point. <laughs> now, you are left with just to pick a few other things. Now, allow me to say, the C-suit guys will not listen to anything apart from value. And if you are able to communicate value and communicate it clearly, then you've got uh, a winning card. I'll tell you, for example, at Mombasa Port Circle, I've been given a target that this year, 2023, my department should be able to earn, you know, the organization, I tell you, over 50 million Kenyan shillings. That is profit. How, then I've got to break it down. What is the IT department going to do to make the organization that money? So, the moment you now use those figures, say, now, if you want me to get you this money, and this is how I'm going to get it, I need A, I need B, I need C. Then everybody will say, fine, give him, so that he can be able to give us, and deliver every time you have been given that opportunity. Once you deliver once, the second time is going to be a lot easier. And the moment people believe that you are a deliverer or a, a worker, then they are, they are able to not give you a lot of opposition. But there is also that relationship. It won't work because, again, it is uh, a collaboration. Even within the department. Yes, you can put systems there. But who is telling members about those systems? Who is telling members about the products that you have uh, innovated? Uh, you've got a team that, for example, receives calls. If they talk to members badly, members will move. So it is a whole collaboration that it depends on a relationship. Actually, we are going to come to that later on, bringing in the members. So, uh, Melissa, you must have had a different experience. He talks about conversations. Um, Robert Henry talks about uh, members, and Robert talks about working backwards. You know, you get the end and then you work backwards. How do you reconcile your advisory role as an outsider by bringing in information on transformation? Uh, you are correct. It's a very different ballgame. Uh, my, my, my approach, and my approach is 
possibly a little bit more unique because I obviously I'm not Kenyan. You know, let's call a state a state. I'm I'm clearly a foreigner, um, <laughs> and we have a we have a natural charm about us from my country. So if you meet a fellow Australian, uh, I'm not that unique. But for but for me, it's about you, I can't come in and I can't come to you know Port Sarko and go do business this way because it would not work. I need to relate to them first. So I actually need to get to know them before I can actually deliver what I want to try and deliver to them. So taking it from a more uh, actual personal perspective, you know, like I try and find out, you know, do they have any children or what's their sport that they like to follow? Just something general um, that you can relate to because once you relate to somebody, and this also is a bit of advice for some of the junior people in the room, once you can relate to somebody, you get that credibility because as a consultant, I need to build trust and credibility first. So for me to build that, I need to relate and then I need to be able to be very sure on what I'm speaking about. So always doing my background research to see what's happening in the industry, what's been happening with other players in the market um, and always keeping you know, in contact with you know, all of the different regulatory uh, bodies, etc. Um, you know, actually meeting with them, not just following what, what has been happening in the market but actually sitting down with them and discussing with them. So you've got to be constantly uh, keeping your knowledge and your awareness of, of the industry to, to get that credibility and then you know the next thing is okay what are you here for I want to now listen to you okay Janet so in your case you're head of partnerships ecosystems lots of things when someone is say trying to get a partnership going with a vendor you know what are some of the things that they need to look out for and how do they know it's a good partnership that when they're bringing on board someone new yeah uh, okay so um, so in, in that space of partnerships, um, at BTV partnerships are part of the digital transformation. It's actually one of the pillars. And the way we look at um, you know, how you can look at some, you know, an entity, a company, and, and realize that you can collaborate with them or you can buy from them uh, whatever digital solution you're looking at, first, first and foremost, you have to look at alignment of values. Right? How are you aligned, you and the vendor? How are you aligned in terms of value, in terms of what you want to build and take to market, or in terms of what you want to build and actually implement? So what are those things that deviate? And is, um, is that deviation material? For instance, if you're looking at um, automating some specific uh, back office processes um, and, and your view and your you know, your, your basic and biggest pain point is around cost. Is this particular vendor coming in or is this partner coming in to work with you, going to work with you to reduce the cost, or is their strategic intent more around increasing their profits, which make it, you know, more expensive for you? So the first thing is value. The second thing is, um, you know, collaborative efforts, feedback mechanism. Are they willing to actually sit on the table and listen to your... Um, you know, your feedback. You have, uh, so they've come up with this. You like it, but it doesn't fit. As, 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 as she said, you, um, a vendor can have a certain solution or a certain uh, plan in the market, but it doesn't necessarily completely fit into your need. Mm -hmm. So there are areas of customization. So are they willing to actually walk that journey with you step by step? Are they aligned to your strategic uh, you know, goal, especially around budget, scope, and time? Mm -hmm. So you have this particular need, they have the solution, but that gap, are they willing to be on the table to take your feedback and be ready to actually walk the journey with you? And finally, of course, the last bit, which is usually the hardest, is um, and endearing your partner or your vendor into your customer feedback mechanism. Because sometimes we all sit around the table and decide, as a circle or as a bank, we need to come up with this solution. But what does the customer actually want? Or how does the customer actually speak to it? So um, the, the solution is there, but the customer has a different view. So is your vendor aligned to your customer requirements? Is he willing or is she willing to sit down with you, understand your customer pain points, and actually walk the journey of solving each and, those, each and every of those pain points within the process flows that are within that digital solution? So basically, for me, I actually would say your partner should be you know, those three things first before anything else. Aligned to your strategic goals, 
and your value system um, in terms of culture, in terms of cost, uh, and in terms of your planning, how are they coming onto the table? Mm -hmm. And finally, your customer centric uh, mm, roadmap, how are they plugged into it? Okay, that's great. I like your customer centric approach. You know, it is said that digital transformation is basically about customer satisfaction, that it's supposed to make them happy. So, what is it that you can do to make your customer happy? But now the conversation is here is, is at a high level. How do you bring it down to, well, me? You know, people like me who are not heads of CIOs or anything of the sort. I am a customer in a circle. How do I understand digital transformation? Why is it important to me? Why should I care? You've gone through it with your members. How did you describe it to them? Yes, you yeah. and Henry um, and Robert. Actually, that is one of the hardest and it is the key to doing well because the moment you resonate with your members then it will become very easy um, to do a digital transformation uh, you remember in Kenya when we introduced the Mpesa I am sure nobody envisioned that uh, the old people, our grandmothers, great grandmothers, will ever operate an Mpesa. I remember before my, my grandmother died at one or three years, she could call and say, Nitumia ile Mpesa. Then if I delay a bit, she will be like, Kwani, how, how much money are you sending? It's coming slowly, you know? But what that tells you, if you introduce any process properly, if you introduce a service properly, any member will check it up. So there is quite a balance that we need to work on. One is uh, not to give members what they don't need, but you sometimes can anticipate what they don't know they need, that when you give them, to be able to work. I'll tell you, for example, I will remember when I worked, uh, you know, I love stories. When I worked at uh, uh, Chai Sako, we were the first circle to introduce um, WhatsApp banking. And people were like, what? WhatsApp? And the way it's free, it is security uh, for us. You know, it won't work. But we said we will and put security measures there. So, because WhatsApp is free, we have to get a way to authenticate outside of WhatsApp and then bring somebody back to the WhatsApp. And the transaction completes. So, members were like, we will never use this. But, a few times, USSD fails. What do members ask for? How do you want us to get our money? And there is no USSD working. So, we ended up bringing that as a solution. And now members will not be down because the USSD is not working. They'll use what? WhatsApp. And it's free. Thank you. Okay. okay. How, how sometimes to introduce uh, these services to the, to the members is uh, two-way. Uh, how we do it uh, in my organization is that we get this feedback from our members. What, are, what uh, do they want out there? And the funny thing is... Um, the type of members that we have as an organization, they are the ones who are demanding this technology. Sometimes it's not even IT thinking about it. It's them asking us, why are you not giving us this? I'll give you a, a, an example. In one of the organizations that I've worked, uh, I've worked with, we had um, a USSD platform and a mobile app. Those members would never use the app. They were all into the USSD because of the type of members that we you are serving. So it's uh, probably to look at what clients are you serving, uh, what will work uh, well with them. Like uh, now, uh, what we're doing is like moving all, all services to the mobile app. We have a USSD platform as well, but we are not doing much there because it's like 10% of our members are using the USSD, 90% are on the app. So uh, give the member what they need and probably what is very easy for them to, to, to use. The steps that you uh, use to introduce a a solution, for example, how to repay a loan from the app should be like two or three steps. Don't make it very uh, long, five, seven steps. Uh, someone might not want to use it. 
why should I use seven steps when I can walk in and probably give cash? So it's uh, the clients you serve, what feedback you're getting from them, especially after you've also introduced the service. Uh, do not uh, imagine that you've made it, you've given them the service and they are all okay, but also get feedback on how they're using that service as well. Okay. Joseph, I'm glad the public demanded for you because this question is something that you would know very well. When it comes to balancing innovation and digital transformation, and then on the other hand you have security and stability, how do you weigh this? Which matters most? What do you give the organization? And how do you balance it? So, wearing my uh, security hat, uh, I will say security trumps all. Uh, but I've moved up to appreciate uh, that the business has to keep flowing. Uh, the business has to continue to innovate. It has to come up with creative ways of interacting with the members. Uh, it has to offer options. Which means you must balance between the two. I am okay having the headache of figuring out how to protect vulnerabilities of a digital solution versus just saying no. I would rather take the time to appreciate we want to give WhatsApp banking how do we securely authenticate our clients to be able to transact? That's the headache I need to be able to deal with. So ultimately, when and we, we started this talking about the C-suite, I spending all my time to talk about vulnerabilities doesn't quite cut it. I need to appreciate where the business is going. I need to show that I understand what the business is doing. I need to get creative in the solutions that I suggest that will still allow the business to continue to interact, innovate, grow, find new ways of interacting with the members and do it securely. Okay, so Melissa and Janet, they talked about the customer and how you think about them, but when you're thinking about bringing in digital transformation to an organization, how do you, well, sort of allay their fears of the unknown and tell them this is actually for your benefit and what are even the benefits of digital transformation for a member? I feel like I'm going to give the, a very similar answer to, to my colleagues here. Um, it is, it's all about your delivery. Um, and I'll, I'll be honest, if you're not a confident person, just fake it. Because I, I, <laughs> no, I'm being genuinely serious about that. If you walk into a room incredibly confident, you will have 80% of the people already on board. Okay. The other 20%, they might ask you a few questions. So, but it is about your delivery. If I walk in and, you know, as I said, do this, do that, everyone's going to be like, oh. But if I walk in and say, like, hi, everybody, how's it going? You know, rah, rah, rah. Everyone's already, like, smiling. So, most of you are already smiling with me, right? <laughs> I've got 80% of you already on board. But it is. It is about your delivery. But it's also about understanding what you're delivering. Okay? And that's where your confidence comes into it. Um, you know, and it's the same that uh, I keep thinking over and over in my head with all the different topics. It's also about having different channels to tap into your different customers. You know, you might have customers that are preferential to a USSD, but then you've got other customers that might like to have a CFA. You've got some customers that might like, use, like to use WhatsApp. And I will be very honest, generalization will work for about 80%, but then you'll have 20% that will break, break the rule. So, for example, me. Right? I don't use an app, okay? Because I don't like an app. But I trust USSD and I don't know why. Don't, don't even ask me where it comes from, okay? Might be because it took me four days once to transfer some money, but that's my own fault. But if you then said to me, hey, we're going to do WhatsApp banking, I'd be like, no way, I'm not using WhatsApp to do my banking. That's my social platform. So as I said, it's also about choosing the right customers to also, you know, um, survey and making sure that, you know, probably don't ask me if I am a banking customer of yours because uh, I'll break the mold on you. But it is about making sure that you do speak to your customers and speaking to enough of them to get a, a broad range. Okay. And what is the value of digital transformation for the customer? How do you explain that to them and break it down so that they can see and visualize it? I think you have to show them. You know, people want to see what's the result of this, what's going, you know, don't talk to them in hindsight. Already have something, even if it's a prototype, if you're looking to pilot, have something that's already working because everybody can talk in hindsight and everybody can talk in, you know, theory. But actually having that practical experience to say, okay, if it's, say, let's talk um, something easy, a client-facing app. And as Henry said, don't have seven steps. 
because by the third step, I've lost interest. I've probably even closed the app. Um, you know, and I'm not even the most recent generation. Um, you know, I'm, I'm in the middle. So about you know showing them, well, this is how it will work. This is the benefits that you will get. You need to show them because as a customer, even think about yourselves. I would always say, put yourself in your own customer's point of view, and how would you want your bank to talk to you? Janet, yeah. Um, so the thing about digital transformation, as the, the panel panelists have mentioned, it's a process. Mm -hmm. And one of the most underrated process is the one that is actually facing the consumer, mm -hmm. right? Um, from the moment you decide we're going to transform X, walk the journey with them. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that um, we shock customers with, they wake up one morning and get an SMS, uh, please upgrade your application, or we've changed our channel to this and that. Or that usually that is what makes um, customers have an apathy to change. But when you carry them along, so for instance, you have discovered, um, or rather you have uh, put in a strategy to look at your digital channels. You want to digitize your interaction with the customers. And you have data. One of the things that we also don't use is data. So you have data to know who's using this channel, who's using this, who is likely to be converted to another, and why are they not. And you pick, you share your pick the, the guys that would actually be for, Okay, technically we'll call them part of the beta testing. But then you don't want them at the beta stage. You want them from the moment you want to make the changes. And they walk the journey with you. You tell them this is what we want to change. And they ultimately become your ambassadors. And the other thing that we also don't do, we do it for staff. Whenever we have something new, we spend a lot of money and time to train staff. But we never put the same efforts to actually train our consumers. So if you want to make someone actually understand why you did what you need to do and what value it is to them. Remember, it's digital transformation on the one side is uh, selling. It's basically you become a salesperson for that process. So you need to show them what is a value proposition. And at this point, one of the other things we always do is price. You put it as, at the lowest because the customer will still buy. Right? Um, so just getting them to understand we're making this change or we're introducing this process or we're introducing this product or we have this new organizational uh, move and the value to you is A, B, C, D. And how do you recover that value is we have reduced A, as, 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 as you mentioned, we have reduced the number of steps you need to take to actually interact with us, number one. Number two, it's now 24-7. Mm -hmm. Number three, you, because of the efficiencies of the system, your costs have gone lower. Number four, A, B, C, D, you know. Mm -hmm. And in that particular conversation, you get to even get more insights to your product development life cycle. Because then your next feature will not be based on what a panel or rather um, a sitting of c suit guys uh, decided. It will be based on actual facts on the ground. We like what you introduced. Now we can do bank-to-bank -bank transfers. But tell you what, we now want to pay merchants. So that becomes your priority. Putting the, the customer at the center of the transformation. Ian, we were told we get an extra five minutes because we are so many. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. I'm just saying. <laughs> Does anybody actually have a question? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm curious about how you talked about cherry picking ambassadors. I am nominating all of you to be my ambassadors to say Africa magazine. I'm not cherry picking anyone. Please, you're welcome. You have it on your seat. Take a copy and spread the gospel. And uh, I think <laughs> now that Ian is here, <laughs> thank you so much, my panelists. You've been great. And I'm glad that you made it today. All right.